How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how you can liquidate your gift cards with no fee whatsoever, with a little bit of financial engineering. Let's face it, you probably got some gift cards as a gift, or maybe you were trying to fulfill your spend requirements, you got five or 10%, or maybe you got some credit card bonuses through buying these gift cards, and then now you have too many gift cards, you don't know what to do with it, and you want to liquidate it instead so that you get the cash out. You probably know that every single time you do any kind of financial transaction, for example, if you sell a gift card, you're gonna end up having to pay a small fee. You can sell it to Coinstar or something, you can go on these websites that does reselling of gift cards, eventually someone's gonna take a cut. I did some research on this and some site says you can sell your Amazon gift card for more than it's actually worth. I looked it up on eBay myself to see what the past transactions are and I do not see such a thing. So today I'm gonna concentrate more on actual things that you can do. Gift cards is a huge business. It's not just that they're selling the cards and then you have to come back to the store to buy it. When they sell a certain amount, a certain percentage of this is gonna get lost or stolen and this value will never get claimed. In fact, in 2011, from Tower Research, there's about $2 billion worth of gift cards that remains unclaimed and then it just kind of evaporates into thin air. This $2 billion is what you do not want to lose. And if you're able to keep this from happening from your own pocket, it's going to represent a lot of money for you. Now, if you got a Visa or Master gift card and you can spend it anywhere where they accept credit cards, you can essentially, I think the best way to spend this amount is to spend it on something you would have anyway and that your credit card bonuses will not get you that much a percentage back. These include utilities. A lot of utilities can actually accept credit cards, including water, gas and electric, your trash bill, your medical premiums, your car insurance premiums, cell phone, internet, and also cable. They all mostly will take your credit card without charging you an additional fee. The most advantageous, I think, is to pay it into your insurance. What you can do is take your Visa gift card, go on wherever you pay your medical bills, go on wherever you pay your car insurance, and then just put that money in, whatever the amount is worth in that card, and then just pay that month's premium, pay it in advance, you don't have to pay in full, just pay whatever that's in that gift card, and then the rest they're gonna bill you, and then you're gonna pay the remainder of that with your credit card. Now let's talk about other kinds of gift cards, such as the ones that you have to redeem at an actual store, or maybe Amazon, which is mostly what I personally buy. The idea here is you wanna look at this at a macroscopic view. Where is the money going? If you're actually spending extra money to buy stuff that you never would have just because you have that credit card, then you're actually losing money. The trick here is to buy stuff that you would have anyway. So then you might have to wait a little while and have a need for a certain item and then you spend that money. Therefore, you need to have that credit sitting there for a while before you actually find an actual need for yourself. Once you spend that money, you can kind of go, well, I would have spent cash instead for that item. So I can just take money out of your checking account and then go, okay, you know, you just kind of redeemed it for cash that way. You really needed to do this dual transaction here because most times when you actually want them to directly give you cash, you're always going to take a certain cut from it. So that's why this video is about no fee. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, there's a little bit of financial trickery and you gotta you know, spend it at one spot and then take money from another spot. Another way to draw down on your Amazon gift card is to buy things for friends and family. You can entice people to go through you because maybe you have an Amazon Prime membership and they don't. So then they're gonna be incentivized to you know, say, hey, you know, can you buy this and this for me? I've had this happen to me all the time. And then uh, you can order it for them. And then you know, two days later, if they're your coworker or something, you can give it to them in person. They can give you the cash and you know, it's a win-win for both people. They get it fast, you get whatever cut that you got from buying all those gift cards. Now, another way is also if you work at some place and you need to buy stuff for that company. A lot of times you can find things that you need for your company on Amazon. Therefore, you can buy whatever you need from Amazon, use your gift card credit, and then you expense it, and then your company pays you back in cash through this reimbursement. If you run your own business or if you're self-employed, you can also expense things that you buy on Amazon, which, you know, whatever equipment that you need, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. You just need to make sure that those things that you buy are business expenses. 
This comes in many, many different folds of benefits because number one, buying those gift cards, you probably got 5% cash back, 10% cash back, or maybe you were churning credit cards or something. So right off the bat right there, you got five, 10%, even 30% cash back uh, just from that transaction. And then you use that gift card credit and then you go and buy business expense things. And then yet again, you can write off your business expenses. And then this amounts to something between 30 and 40% off that you are not paying for whatever that item that you're buying. Another idea is just simply to re-gift them. If you get it and you don't really go to that store, you can certainly give it to someone that you think would go to that store. So this is very easy. It comes in, you give it back out in the same value. Now, if all these methods fail for you, you don't like to do any of it, or maybe you cannot do it because you know, for whatever reason, you don't have access to these ways. You can also go on a gift card resale place called raise.com. You basically go on there and then sell these gift cards for a slightly lower value than the actual value of the gift card, and then people will pay you through that. Of course, on this website, you can't sell Amazon gift cards for one reason or another. If you guys are interested in this, check out my referral link down in the video the description below where you can get a $5 credit if you actually use my referral. Yet another way that you can convert all of this Amazon gift card credit into cash, which is a little bit harder, is to buy things and then resell them. Now, there's a trick to this because you essentially become a reseller. And I feel like over the years when I've done this plenty of times, and the best way to do this is wait for these lightning deals, wait for you know some very, very good deal, like Black Friday or something, and then you can get some item for really, really cheap. You just have to monitor all the time. And you know this might take some time and effort, okay? But when you do it successfully, you can actually maybe even make a profit on it. What I recommend to buy, of course, is to buy things that has a lot of traffic, something that is very, very popular, and you just monitor those items for whatever amount that you wanna spend, and then you have to just keep track of it, and then whenever the price drops on that, and you see that it's a good deal. So you need to be a reseller, put on your, your reseller hat here, and you have to have an eye for a good deal. A lot of people have this eye, and then you buy that item, and then when it comes back, you just wait a week or something until the price comes back up. So you have to foresee that this price drop is temporary and that it will come back. Not in the case where you know you have some item and they t permanently drop the price. Then you can't have that price come back up and then people will pay more for it. So when you resell the item, you can resell it on sites like let go, offer up, close five, and all those things, you know, they're tra cash based transactions and in person. So you can avoid the fees of things like eBay or selling on Amazon. So usually those fees would eat a lot into, you know, you trying to uh, cash out on this thing. You know, they might charge five to 10% or something. And this is enough to kind of hurt. So if you do this and you can spot those products, you might be able to go on camel, camel, camel uh, Just look for huge price drops and just look for all the items and see which one you actually recognize. Don't buy those items that are, you know, some random brand name because usually people don't buy those things. You want a hot item and you want an item that temporarily lowered its price if you want to do this you know resell thing and try to reclaim the cash just to give you guys some examples i think buying markdown legos is actually a very very good idea because there's a lot of demand for legos um i used to buy a lot of it and you know just i didn't want to collect anymore so then i just got rid of my whole stock uh but while i was doing it sometimes if you wait around for you know, the sale, sometimes it might be $50 off or something. So you need to have an eye for it. You need to keep track of it. If you don't have anything to do, then this might be actually a fun thing to do. And when they lower the price, you buy it and then maybe it'll come back up, maybe not. But as long as you lower the price to market value, people are going to buy it. Another thing is also Apple products. Now, you don't want to go too expensive sometimes because if it's a too big a transaction, people get a bit jittery, right? Because you don't want to go, you know, did you steal it or something, right? So you want to keep it around like $100, $200. If it's something really big, um, you know, you might need to bite the bullet and sell it on eBay because through that, people are a little bit more trusting because there are buyer protections involved in that. And, you know, people are more willing to buy bigger ticket items through 
a site that you know monitors the communication. There's some guarantees involved. So thanks for watching this video. Having access to all of these, you have your choice of all of them, which you do not have to pay a fee at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like over here. Push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.